Okay, this is an introductory tutorial about Flash. This is I'm using Flash Professional CS5, and I'm going to talk about the timeline and the basic interface and how the timeline functions. Okay, um, to start with, I've uh, opened up Flash, and I'm going to go to Window, and you'll see under Workspace I'm using Classic Mode, and I'm going to reset Classic Mode so it's kind of like in a default layout. Now I need to start with a new file. I could pick, um, typically I'll start with either an ActionScript 3 or an ActionScript 2 file. This is the programming language that uh, is built into Flash and depending on which one you're going to use you would click on either one of these and it would uh, set that setting for you just off the get-go. So I'll just pick, pick uh, ActionScript 2.0 alright and here is the basic workspace we've got the toolbar on the left here is the stage in the center we have got the timeline up at the top now this is once again the classic um, workspace mode okay it reminds people of earlier versions of flash the property window on the right hand side and you can see other palettes that are available to you over here now here is the timeline right here now a couple things here right from the get-go I always select my selection tool to start with I click on the background and I can set the frame rate which is gonna have everything to do with the timeline right now it's set for 24 frames per second so if I have content here on this timeline the playhead will move at 24 frames per second I can also change the size of my document here or the background stage color you'll see I now I have a gray background right Okay, let's uh, get a quick drawing tool. I'm going to hold down the mouse and grab the oval tool. And I'm going to create a red fill here. And I'll make a uh, purple outline, let's say. And I'll hold down the shift key and click and drag and draw a quick circle. All right, now the circle is based of two pieces here. You've got the fill and the stroke or the line here, right? So two different pieces here, probably hard to see. Let me change this back to white. Okay, um, and what I'm gonna want is just the circle. So I'm going to click on the outline and press delete on the keyboard. So the way the timeline works is, the timeline has these frames that you can activate or you can turn them into keyframes. Now right here, this is a keyframe. Okay, and if I want to move this ball in time, I can do it by making keyframes. So I can go to this next frame right here, and I can right click on it and go insert keyframe, and then I can click on the ball and move it a little bit. And now I have a two frame animation. I can scrub the playhead by grabbing this red thing at the top or hit control play. Now, if I want to, I can hit control loop playback and control play and the thing will loop and you can see it's doing it 24 frames per second so it's moving quite fast okay so let's keep doing that also I can just select this next frame and hit F6 on my keyboard which will place a keyframe and then I can move it and I'll select the next one hit F6 and then I will select with the selection tool and move it and now I have a four frame animation control play and you can see it's looping right now if I want to slow this down there's two different ways to slow it down I can change the frame rate I can change it now let's say to 12 I wouldn't go below 12 if you want smooth animation and hit control play and now you can see it's moving a lot slower right or what I could do is take this back up to 24 frames per second and what I could do instead is put regular frames or extensions of these keyframes in between each keyframe. So I can do that by selecting the first keyframe, right click, and insert a regular frame, a non-keyframe. And if I do that, you see it takes this little, this little uh, different look to it. And I'll right click, insert frame. Also, I could do it by selecting the keyframe and hitting F5 on my keyboard, right? And I'll do that again for here. And so now I've got keyframe regular frame keyframe regular frame keyframe and now if I hit control play you'll see that it's set to 24 frames per second but having the um, frame in between the keyframes makes the um, animation slow down control stop let's do it some more I'll hit sit I'll select this keyframe and hit F5 to add a regular frame add a regular frame F5 add a regular frame select 
click F5, add a regular frame, and control play. Okay? Now at any time if I want, what I can do is I can go to one of these keyframes and I can change the position. Now it's going to change the animation. It's going to change the position of this red ball on this frame as well as the two regular frames. Changes happen on keyframes. So now notice as I scrub, now it goes down, back up, and over. So now if I hit Control Play, you can see that there's a difference there. All right? Okay, great. Okay, let's keep going and see if we can pack as much into this as possible. So once again, I'll select here, hit F6, which creates a keyframe, and then I can move my object. I can also scale it using the free transform tool. Right? So I could change its size. I could change the color by selecting on it and then changing the color chip. And then once again, I can hit Control Play. I can add regular frames, F5. Also, another thing I can do is, let's say I want to have this circle, but I want to have another animation happening on another layer. Well, I can create a new layer. I can name these layers. I'll call this one circle and this one square and I could animate something completely separate on the um, square layer. Now at this point I have a choice. If I'm going to make a square on layer 2 what I might want to do is lock the circle layer so I don't mess with it. So now I am on the square layer and I have it selected and what I want to ask myself is I'm going to switch to this rectangle tool and I'm, I'm going to make the color, the color will end up being, let's say, green. And for the stroke, I'll just choose no, so there won't be an outline. And I have a choice. Do I want the square to start animating at the beginning? That's where this key, empty keyframe is. Notice this is what we call a blank keyframe. Or do I want to start it animating over here somewhere, right? So let's say I wanted to have it appear right here. Well, I'll uh, put a keyframe right here, right click, insert keyframe. Right, and now I'm on this keyframe, and now I'll draw my square. To constrain proportions, I'll hold down the Shift key. So now I have a square, right? And this is just a shape, okay? Um, when I select this shape, I can select it, move it around, drag it. All right, here it is. Notice it appears on frame 13. So if I hit Control Play, it appears on frame 13. And you can see it looping, and then it starts over at the beginning. Now what I'm going to do is I'll stop that and I will animate it. I'll say F6 and I'll move it down and then I'll go here. Let's say, notice I'm skipping a frame there. F6 automatically puts a frame in between. I'll go here, F6, go down. So now it's moving, right? It's moving down and notice the circle is gone. Well, the circle's gone because there's no frames here. Having no frames on layer 1 or on the circle layer is the equivalent of having almost a blank keyframe there. So the circle plays on the timeline until it no longer exists, and then we don't see it anymore. And the square is still there, so we see the square, right? So, and the only way to get good at this is to practice with it. So and this is a short introduction to how the timeline works. And uh, it's just step one in how it functions. You're going to need to want to have a lot of practice working with it.